Okay, so we're going to do a cubist self-portrait. So first what we need to do is we need to start with just the layout of our design. Layout means to pick how big everything is going to be on the paper, where it's going to go on the paper, and then how much of the paper is going to be background. That's what a layout is. And when an artist sketches, these are the types of things they plan out. Because if they just go in and they start drawing and painting, and they don't really plan out the layout, where everything's going to go, then it's very easy to make a mistake. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plan out where the head's going to be. And we're also, while we're doing this, going to plan out how big the head's going to be. So I'm just going to draw an oval right here. I'm going to put it in the middle of my paper. It's just an oval, and it's drawn very lightly because that way I can erase very easily. The next thing I'm going to plan out is I'm going to plan out the neck. Now since this is cubism, we don't have to worry about everybody, everything being the right size. So I'm going to make my neck kind of long. The next thing is I'm going to just indicate where the body is. It's not even going to look realistic. It's just a loose shape. I can erase this and fix this anytime I want. You can make it just a rectangle. I'm just kind of using some curvy lines. Am I drawing dark lines yet? No. I am not drawing anything dark. Now, I'm going to do something a little weird. I'm going to draw a rectangle right over here. Weird is okay because we're in art class, right? And I'm going to draw, coming out of this rectangle, two little lines like that. And on the end of that, I'm going to make a hand. I'm going to make a hand on the end of that. Okay, so in cubism, Picasso, when he draws in the cubist style, everything not only looks mixed up, but it's distorted. Distorted means that it doesn't look like the shapes that it really is. So fingers can go one way, and another finger can go another. They can be different sizes. You can have the fingernail on the wrong side whatever you want to do it's cubism it's more made up than anything else so his hand looks really weird okay remember this is just your practice drawing you're going to copy this onto an, a final drawing paper so it's okay if it's not perfect you're just working your design out so he's got one hand down here and then let's go ahead and draw his other hand down here across his body like he's holding himself. Maybe he's holding himself. Why not? Maybe he's hungry. Yeah, maybe he's ready for it to be lunchtime. He wants to go to the cafeteria and get a cheeseburger. Maybe he wants to go to McDonald's and get a milkshake. Maybe he just ordered a pepperoni and anchovy pizza and he can't wait for it to come, so he's holding his stomach. Who knows? All right, now let's... Let's, I'll let you have a minute or so to finish that up. Okay, now, let's go up to the head. This is the, my favorite part of the drawing, It's the work on the head. I'm gonna zoom in. First thing is, we're gonna draw the nose. Make a big nose sticking out to the side. And Picasso often said that a nose is just an upside down seven. So make an upside down seven. When you're thinking, in drawing abstract, yes, if you simplify the nose, we're going to make some nostrils, don't worry. I'm going to use triangles for the nostrils because Picasso very often used triangles for the nostrils. Now the eyes. Let's do the eyes. Now normally when I draw a regular portrait, the eyes are my favorite part, but in a, in a cubist portrait, they're my second favorite part. I'll tell you what my favorite part is in just a minute. So make your eyes. You don't have to copy them exactly. I'm making one have an X and one have an O. Why? Just because I can. You can make yours differently if you want. Here's my eyebrows. He's got big, thick eyebrows. They're like little caterpillars crawling across his face. Why not? All right, so I said just a moment ago that normally eyes are my favorite part, but in a cubist portrait, the mouth is my favorite part. 
So we're going to make, first of all, the mouth really big. And here's the top lip. I'm just using some triangles here. Really easy peasy. The bottom lip is just a curve. And then the best part of all is the tongue and the teeth. Picasso often just used a triangle to show a tongue sticking out of the mouth. I'm just doing a little shading here. Yeah, you can do triangle teeth, sure. So we're going to just do a big ear. Just use simple shapes. And then we're going to re-outline the face. So do the ear, and then we're going to re-outline the face. I'm actually going to change one little thing on my drawing. You don't have to change it on yours, but I'm going to make his nose go straighter up like this. If you want to copy me, you can, but you don't have to. All right, let's re-outline the face. Are we ready? Okay, so I'm just going to go and make a big curve for the top of the head. And then underneath here, another curve to show the chin and the jawline right here. This is called the jawline. Now, I'm not going to draw any hair on mine. And the reason why is because this is a cubist self-portrait and I'm bald. I don't have any hair. But you're going to want to add hair to yours. Okay? Then after you add hair, you may uh, add optional tears to make it a weeping self-portrait. Yep, just like the weeping woman. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to mine. I'm adding optional tears. Mine's a weeping man. Yours would be a weeping child. And then after you're done doing that, you're going to want to add to your body and make it look like the clothes you're wearing. So I'm wearing a shirt with a collar, with a tie, and I've got to also draw my microphone. Add some forehead lines. Try to make it look like you. Like for instance, I always have a bunch of pens in my shirt pocket. And then the last thing we got to design is the background. We didn't do the background. We're just going to make it look like a room. You'll see. All right. I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes to work on your body. Remember, this is just a sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to use this as a guide for our final artwork. Ooh, I got to add hair to my arms. Cuz I have hair. I have hairy arms. Oh, I've got hair on my hands. I should draw hair all over my hands, too. Man, I don't know about you, but I'm having fun making this drawing. Is this your future self? Future self as a weeping person? Oh my gosh. Pretty good. I'm going to come around and take a look in just a moment. But I want to show you really quick how to do the background. So just stop for a moment and look up at my screen. It's going to be really easy. We're going to draw a line coming in from the top two corners leading to the face and then join it with a rectangle to make it look like a room. Like you're sitting inside a room. You see that? That's it. That's all we're going to do and then we're going to just color this in with color later. I gotta draw my microphone. Here's my microphone. The actual thing that clips onto my jacket. You can add some shading. 
Shading is always nice. Say, I'm going to add some shading underneath my eyes. Under my nose, there's some shading. Yeah, you can. That's a good idea, actually. Teardrops on your shirt. A little shading on the tongue here. Not too dark. Shadows on the neck. Because your chin juts out over your neck. Maybe some shading on the corners of the eyes to make them look like they're popping out. Shading up between the eyes a little bit there. Maybe some shading on the ear. Some shading on the fingers to make them look round. I hope you guys are seeing all the shading that I'm doing here. Be adding some shading to your drawing. Thank you. You guys can do amazing shading too. Yeah, that's a good way to think about it, Maddie. Just putting it in the corners. That's a good way to think about it. You may also want to shade the ceiling. And if you want to get fancy, you can put a light bulb hanging down in the background like this. With light coming from it. Down and then join them there like that. With a rectangle. See what I did here? Right here. Look, this is what I'm talking about down, down, join it with a rectangle behind him. 